to the satisfaction for all it has due to this officer. You mean just some and you go to you. It's going to die in this. In the night, you have chances. Please, you. Walk me down to his house. I was charging my bonds to take you to. Save you the trouble, see where he comes. Romeo, while well, I go to the goldsmith's house, go thou and buy a rope sand. That will I be stolen on my wife and her confederates for locking me out of my doors by them. But soft, I see the goldsmith. Get thee gone, buy thou a rope, and bring it home to me. I buy a rope, I buy a thousand pound a year. A man is well off who doth trust you. I promised your presence and his name, but neither his name nor gold came to me. And if you like, you thought our love would last too long, if it were chained together, and therefore came not. Do you need to know? How much your chain weighs? You have more care. The fine suit. Draw the fact. Which amounts to three hour buckets of one I stand at this time. I pray, sir, to see you present in charge, for he's bound to see you safe but brave. Right. I'm not furnished with the present money. Besides, I have some business in town. Good singer, take with you this gentleman, and take, take to my house the chain, and bid my wife disperse to some of the receipt thereof. Perchance I'll be there as soon as you. They can bring you to yourself, sir? No, bring it with you west. I come not come enough. Well, sir, any shit about you? And if I'm not sorry, I hope you have, I'll soon be in turn without your money. Nay, come. I pray you, sir. Give you the chain. But what do you tie say for the gentleman? And I am to blame for having you too long. Good Lord, you just down this excuse your brief promise to the poor man's right. I should have chid you for not bringing it. But like a shrew, you first begin to brawl. The hour steals on. I pray you, sir, dispatch. You hear how you have to me. The chain. I give it to my wife and beg your money. Come, come. You know I gave it to you either now. Either send me the chain or send me by some token. Fine, let me run the shimmer out of your breath. I pray you, sir, the chain. Let me see it. My business cannot brook the stallions. Good sir, tell me where you answer me or no. If no, I'll leave this man to the officer. Answer you? What should I answer you? The money he owe me for the chain. I owe you none until I receive the chain. You know I gave it to you half an hour since. You gave me none and you've loaned me much to say so. You owe me more, sir, in denying. Consider I have to my credit. Well, officer, rest them at my suit. Charge in the ditch name to obey. This touch of your reputation, either you consent to pay the sum for me, or I attack you by this officer. Consent to pay me that I never had. Arrest me, foolish fellow, if thou darest. Here's that fee. Arrest him. I'm not so my little brother in this case. You scorn me so, Aaron. You hear the suit, sir? I do arrest you. I do obey you until I get you there. A Sarah, the most finest sport is there, and all the metal in the shop will last. So, sir, I want to enjoy a shame. I doubt it not. Master, there is a bark of epidamnum that stays but till her owner comes aboard. Then she bears away. Our friars are at the bait aboard. Our part be oil, the balsam, and the aqua What? Are you a madman? How you pay a sheep? What ship of epidamnum stays for me? The ship you sent me to, to hire waxes. <laughs> Thou drunken slave, I sent thee for a rope and told thee to what purpose and what end. You sent me to your rope's end this soon. You sent me to the bay for a bark. I'll debate this matter at more leisure, and teach your ears to listen to me with more heed. Tweed you not a villain, hide thee straight, and give her this key, and tell her in the desk, covered with Turkish tapestry, there is a purse of ducats. Have her send it, tell her I'm arrested in the street, and that shall bail me. Hide thee, slave, be gone. On, sir, the prison rolls on. To wage your ground, as that is where we dine, where Dousabelle did claim me for her husband. She is too big, I hope, for me to compass. <laughs> Thither I must go. For servants, mother, and masters, minds fulfilled.
go. The desk, the purse. Sweet, I'll make haste. How is that must thy breath? By running fast. What is thy master, Romeo? Is he well? He's in Tartar limbo. Worse than hell. A devil with an everlasting garment hath him. One whose heart is but in the A fiend, a fury, pitiless and rough. A back friend, a shoulder clapper. One that countermands the passages of alleys, creeks, and narrow lands. A hound that runs counter, yet draws drive but well. One that before judgment carries poor souls to hell. What is it? What is the matter? I do not know the matter, but he is arrested on the case. What? Is he arrested? Tell me at his suit. I know not at his suit he is arrested, but he's in a suit above, that much I can tell. Will you send the mistress the money in his bed? Go, oh, fetch it, sister. This I wonder at, that he unknown to me should be in bed. Tell me, was he arrested on a band? Not on a band, but a stronger thing. A chain, a chain. Do you not hear a room? What, the chain? No, the bell. Tis two ere I left him, now the clock strikes one. The hours come back. That could I never hear. Oh, yes. If any hour meet a sergeant, he turned back for very fear. And if time were in debt, as hotly does that reason. Time is very bankrupt, and knows more than he's worth the season. Nay, he's a thief too. Have you not heard men say that time comes about stealing by night and day? And if he be in debt and theft, and a sergeant in the way, would he not have the reason to turn back an hour in a day? Come to me, let's go. <laughs> 
Fly says the peacock. Miss is taking it.
imagine that. Private devils. Oh, I'm possessed. Ah, oh, the demons have control of me. <laughs> <laughs> Be his nurse, die in his sickness, 
ditches of this avenue. Mark's car, the zero of the Syracusian merchant, who put out luckily in this bay, against the law and the of the town. Be headed, Huckabee, in defense. See where they come. We'll behold his death. Yet once again, claim it publicly. If any friend of his suffering, he shall not die. So much we tender him. Justice, most Lord the Duke, against the abbot. It cannot be that she has done thee wrong. She's a virtuous reverend lady. May it please you, Grace, and tickle unto my husband, whom I made lord of me in all I had at your important letters. This ill day, a most outrageous fit of madness took him, and desperately he hurried through the streets, with him his bondman, all his majesty, doing displeasure to the citizens by rushing in their houses. Nor ever did I fight you. 
I never saw the chase call me heaven, and this is false, you burden me with all. My, what an intricate impeach of this. I think you all have drunk with Circe's cup. If here you now drink, here you would have been. If you were mad, you would not plead so boldly. And say you dine at home, but the gold smith here denies it. Sir, how? what say you? Sir, he dined in the pork and pie with her. He did, and my finger snatched with that ring. Tis true, my liege. This ring I had. Did you see him enter the other by the abbey? As sure, my liege, and then you see your grace. Why is this strange? Some of you go up now, knock on the abbey gate, and bid the lady abbess come hither. Who will slay you? Thou save me, sweet word. Haply, I see a friend who will save my life, and pay the sum that may deliver me. Speak freely, fair liege, and what thou wilt. Is not your name, sir, called Antipholus? And is this not your bondman, Dromio? Within the saddle, sir, I was a man. But he, I thank, is not my cousin too. I am your own and his man, unmet. I'm sure you both remember me. Our stout and humor, sir, by you. Relate to your bad as you are now. You are not patient, patient, are you, sir? Why, why you look strange on me? You know me well. I never saw you in my life till now. Oh, grief hath changed me since you saw me last. And time's deformed hand hath written strange features in my face. But tell me yet, dost thou not know my voice? Uh, neither. Dromeo, but thou? Trust me, sir, nor I. I'm sure thou dost. Ourselves, and whatsoever may deny, you are now bound to believe it. Not know my voice. Oh, time's extremity, hast thou so cracked and splitted my poor tongue that now here, in seven short years, my only son, Knows not my feeble key of untuned ears? All these old witnesses I cannot hear. Tell me thou art my son, Antiphilus. I never saw my father in my life. But seven years since, in Syracuse a boy, thou knowest to be parted, but perhaps thou shamest to acknowledge me in misery. The Duke and all that know me in the city can witness with me that it is not so. I never saw Syracuse in my life. I tell thee, Syracuse, I have been patient to Antiphilus for nigh on twenty years. During which time he never saw Syracuse. I see the age and dangers make thee dote. What is my duty to behold a man much wrong? I see two husbands which my eyes are deceiving. <laughs> One of these men is genius to the other. But which is the natural man? And which is the spirit? Who deciphers them? <laughs>
I must have that ring from you. <laughs> Here, take it, and much thanks for my good cheer. And now, dear, our safe to take the to go with us and be happy here. So you're at my support with all our fortunes, and all that our sons in this place, that by the sympathize one day's error have suffered wrong. Go, be your company, and shall make full satisfaction. Thirty-three years have I gone but in travail of you, my son. Until this present hour, my heavy burden there delivered. Oh my heart, a gossip at this feast. Now let's go hand in hand, not one before the other. 